What is going on guys? Welcome to Greg Ellis TV. This is the OnePlus N30. It's a budget phone. It goes for about 300 bucks. Um, you can buy it at T-Mobile or Metro by T-Mobile for basically you know, like a monthly cost. So we can get it for like a little less than 300 overall uh, or potentially free depending upon what kind of deal they offer you. Um, but we're gonna talk about the specs on this. But before you jump into that, just let me show you what's inside the box. Obviously you get the phone but then you also get a really fast charger for a budget phone. Um, it charges up to 50 watts. You can see it's a big boy, USB-C uh, charging cable. So this will charge uh, from zero to 80% in about 30 minutes. So it charges pretty fast up to eight, you know, it'll go at hundred percent, but ultimately just zero to 80% uh, will get you in 30 minutes. So it's really, really fast. Also this box is really big as well. The other cool things about this is it has a couple of things that some older major phones used to have. One is it has internal storage. So you get up to a terabyte of micro SD card if you want to add one in. You also get your headphone jack, which is a very rare thing. USB-C charging. You don't get any wireless charging, any water resistance, stereo speakers, 108 megapixel camera on the back, 6.7 inch. 1080p 120 hertz display which is great to see very rare that you're gonna ultimately see a phone with that kind of stuff all those things i just talked about um the brightness on here you can get it's basically 550 nits up to 680 nits i actually find the display i already even i don't even have it up that high and this thing gets bright and i'm very impressed with it. i'll turn it up real all the way up real quick I thought I was really, you know, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Even at these lower brightnesses, it looks really, really nice. I was pretty happy uh, with that processor inside. This is a Snapdragon 695 and it does have 5G, runs Android 13. Um, it's not the newest processor. It's not a great processor in terms of uh, performance, but you can still pretty much do everything that you want. I did take a Geekbench six score i want to show you the score that i got 909 on the single core and then uh, 2075 on the multi-core so you're not going to compete with the flagship phones that are out right now but i'll show you some gaming on this in a moment just to show you and some overall performance as well eight gigabytes of ram which is awesome you know it's definitely enough uh, internally you can get this either with 128 or 256 of ufs 2.2 storage so not the i think the latest is ufs 4.0 storage but that's with like flagship phones really expensive phones uh, you can do up to 1080p video on the back and on the front here and that's pretty much all the stuff face unlock it does have a fingerprint sensor on the side um that's pretty much it all the things i mentioned so let me show you the fingerprint sensor first since we're here Works very well, very happy with it, it's accurate, it's fast. So that's been really, really nice. I did say this as a Snapdragon 695. Um, we're up to you know 8 Gen 2 currently at the time making this video, it's like a flagship one. Um, and then, then they have their 7 Gen 1 series and 2 series as well. Um, so I don't know why they kind of went with a slightly older processor, but you know, for day-to-day -day usage stuff, it. I, I mean, I got to admit, it's 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 fine for what it is. Um, just running around here. I'll bring up a go to androidpolice.com. So I got Android Police's website. You can see it loads. It, this is like completely fine for what you want. Open up your camera. Get your weather. Um, open up Google. Do another search here. Droid Life. So I'll bring up Droid Life's website. So all that stuff's really, really fine. Uh, the, the, the display, I'm actually pretty happy with. I told you the brightness is good. The colors are, are pretty nice and I like the size, 6.7 inch. Doesn't have a lot of bezel or anything on there. It's got the camera cut out at the top there. I will put on a YouTube video for you. Put one of my videos on oh, here. Two coming out really, really soon. Really interesting phone with lights on the back. There we go. So we're gonna talk about some of the differences about that and what it's speakers going to are actually really like impressive. I was actually really happy with the speakers. We'll we'll go through them in a minute, but just gonna kind of show the display here. Let me oh there we go. I'm back. So angle wise, it, it gets a it's not too bad on the angles. It's not as amazing as like a flagship phone, 
might be hard for you to see, but it's okay. You can definitely see it. And like I said, the brightness is good. The colors are good. It, I'm completely fine with this display. I think it's actually pretty nice, the quality of the display. The speakers, like I was saying a second ago, are actually quite nice. Very rare for a budget phone. June 27th, so I'm hoping that- They're not the best speakers I've heard. 27th, but uh, fingers crossed. Right now, at least says 20. But in terms of like, you know, volume, they're they're good. I'm, I'm happy with uh, the, the volume of them. I'll put a song on just so we can hear some music. So speakers, I'm completely happy with. Let's go on to some gaming. It does have a game engine built into it. Actually, my Roblox is kind of weird sometimes. You open it, you close it. Be on up Roblox one more time, just so you can see how fast it opens in real time. Very, very quick. All right, Sonic Race Simulator. And I've never <laughs> played this one, but just watching it for a moment, it seems like it, it runs fine on here. And obviously, you know, the more graphically intensive the game, it's not gonna maybe look as good or as high, as high a frame rate as other games, but you can see it does play 3D games. Here's another one called Front Lines. Now this is like a first person shooter. It's one of the most, I guess I've never really played it, but I was like just Googling it. It's one of the most graphically intensive games. It feels like it's running a little bit slow and then it like froze up there a little bit. <laughs> so it might not be able to play every single game that you want, but in terms of being able to play some of the games that you want in terms of like, it depends again what the graphic intensity of it is, of it is. but day to day usage, like I said, it's it seems completely fine. OnePlus always has a really light skin that's usually pretty fluid. So that's pretty nice of them to have that. And then, you know, what if you wanted to run some kind of multitasking here? Let's do that real quick. We'll go into split screen and then we'll open up a web browser. So if you wanted to, you could play your video. Is that even playing? I think that's playing. There you go. It's playing there. And then you got your website down here that you're watching. So you can do all that stuff too, as well, if you wanted to. Cameras, let's, I took a bunch of photos, but before we do that, I just wanna show you some of the different modes they have in here. They have night mode, video mode, photo, portrait mode, more. More, they have this dual video mode where you can actually use both cameras at the same time. I got one on me, and then the one in the back is working as well. So it's kind of cool that you can do that if you want. You can do a little bubble, or you can do a rectangle. So kind of nice that's built into it. We also, when we go back here, go back to more, you have um, extra HD mode for your photos. You have, I'm gonna go back in there, you go, mode, panorama, macro mode, pro mode, so you can take full control of your camera settings, which is always nice to have. And then text scanner, if you wanna text your scan, uh, text, scan your text. You also, if you go into like video, just to show you, you can change the, the uh, things right there. You can also go into photo mode and tap this, and you can switch between high res which, and low res, which would be uh, up to, if you go high, it's gonna be 108 megapixels. If you go this mode, high res, it's gonna ultimately be a, you know, just a regular mode on there. And you can zoom in up to 6X. So. Let me show you some photos and videos that I captured with the front and the back cameras. Okay, so here is the front camera for this uh, OnePlus N30. What do you think? I'm gonna stand up real quick so you can see it. Walk around just a fair, oh, look at it, 100,000 subscribers. And my favorite phone, 
at least my first one I ever had, the iPhone 3G. But yeah, let's see, I'll sit back down. Now we'll switch to the back camera. Okay, here is the back camera. Gonna kind of do that same kind of test that we just did a moment ago. This does not have an ultra wide camera, so you won't get like a really super wide, but the main camera is actually pretty good with its, you know, width overall. So what do you guys think? Let me know. The microphone's everything. So for 300 bucks, it's not bad. Now, if you compare it to maybe like, if you can get a good deal on like a, a Pixel 7a or a, a Pixel 7 or Pixel 6 or 6 Pro, I'd probably say go with those phones, but this isn't a slouch. It's not too bad. It is getting a little warm after just using it throughout this video, but now it's not burning my hand or anything. But overall, you know, it's not a bad phone. It has a headphone jack. It has really fast charging, has decent cameras and video. Um, it, the performance, it's not the newest processor, but it's still not bad in terms of performance. It's got Android 13 on there. It's gonna get, be able to get all the apps that you want. It can play some games. The speakers are good. It's not a bad phone, guys. Link down below if you wanna pick it up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys down the road.